Hello, folks. Uh, just checking to make sure I got a, a quorum here. I got Karen, I got Ryan. Gary, Gary or... Uh, Bob's here. Looks like everybody's here. Okay, great. All right, if you want to put up the colors. Okay, I have six o'clock, everyone. Would you please join me in pledging the allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you very much. We got a good crowd uh, with us this evening. Uh, this is the uh, November 24th meeting of the Town of Canandaigua Planning Board. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, let me do a quick roll call. Karen Blasey. She's here. Yeah, I, I saw her. She must be on mute. Karen, you, you, you've been away so long you forget how to participate in the meeting. She's just, you're muted, Karen. All right, I, I saw Karen, so we can move on. Ryan Stachuk. I'm here. Gary Humes. Now you're good, Karen. I'm here. Thanks, Karen. Gary, you out there? He is, he's muted too, it looks like. Yes, I'm out here. Okay. And Bob LaCourse. I'm here. Okay, Amanda's been excused this evening. We also have with us uh, John Rovatella, our recording secretary. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Uh, we uh, have we Lance Brabant, representing our yep. town engineers, MRB group. We also have this evening a special guest, Chris Nadler, our town attorney. <laughs> Join Pleasure us. to see you all. We can't see you, though, Chris. You don't want to see me. <laughs> It's, not, hair day. it's not pretty. Okay, and uh, at our at the controls, Eric Cooper, our town planner. Okay, uh, let me go through real quick uh, what our procedures are for this evening. We will uh, at first take privilege of the floor, which I'll do in just a second. But first, yeah, I got it. Okay. Somebody uh, needs to mute their button. All right, the procedures for the night meeting is, as always for virtual meetings, we will, uh, each application, we will hear from the applicant, he or she, or their representative will make a presentation. Uh, we will then turn to the town board for questions and comments. And uh, we'll then open it up to the audience. Anyone who is here regarding that application may have their say at that time. We'll then return to the applicant for any closing concerns, comments, and then the, uh, the board will deliberate and take action on the application. We would ask that if you uh, do want to talk, that you please uh, let us know either by raising your hand or, or somehow getting our attention. And uh, we would ask that you give us your name and your address. So we have that for the record as to who joined us this evening and who participated. All right. That being said, uh, I went through the procedure. Uh, we have a couple, a couple of public hearings tonight, and a continued, a continued public hearing. Uh, it's my understanding they've all been advertised in the Daily Messenger on November. Uh, you gave me the date, Eric. For the record, John, would you give it to me? John, did you you sent that? I thought right. November 17th in the Daily Messenger. Okay, so word went out that we were meeting this evening. So uh, that was on the 17th of November. And uh, first thing we'll do uh, before we get into the actual applications is open the floor up to anyone who would like to speak regarding something that is not on the agenda tonight. So if something is not on the agenda. I, 
thought there was one individual who was wanted to talk to us about ridge lines, but uh, that person is that person is here. Now's the time to speak. If not, yeah, I don't see him on. I, he never confirmed with me that he was going to join us at this meeting. Okay. Um, so he's probably didn't come. Well, can't say we didn't give him the opportunity. He'll All right, moving more. on to our uh, formal agenda. Then uh, the first item is a continued public hearing. Uh, which I will now open for Gerber Homes and BME representing the uh, Malus Family Trust, owners of property at 3215 Daisy Way. And they're seeking an amended final subdivision approval for a finished first floor elevation of a dwelling unit that was constructed more than 12 inches above the approved height. Uh, this has been on our agenda many times since September, and hopefully we can bring it to some resolution tonight. Uh, Link, are you going to uh, speak up on behalf of BME? I'm here, can you hear me? Sure can. Yeah. Okay, um, yep, I'm just, uh, I'm here. Um, we've, uh, I'm sort of um, pinch hitting for James, who I know met with you guys the last couple of times on this. Um, so, but I'm familiar with it. So yeah, we're the uh, one, um, house on lot 56 was a couple feet above the original approved plan i know you've been in front of a couple times and uh, um, john and gerber has been working with the homeowners which i think they might be on the phone call as well um, i guess it sounds like what the consensus is is that um, they want to put the swale in along the property line it's consistent with how it was shown in the original approved plan um, it was just sort of, we've just sort of worked through everything I think today where I think everybody's comfortable with this and I had to get on the horse and get a plan sort of revised here and sent over to you. Um, so what I did was just sort of showed on this plan that swale in between the two lots on the property line. And then I changed that note to just say that uh, the purpose of the plan is the change in the, the grade for that house on lot 56 as well as this swale that uh, along the property line that meets the intent of the original design. Um, I think that's basically what um, has been agreed about in the field and uh, everybody's been working on trying to resolve. So uh, with that, I think um, <clears throat> as you can see in the original, it's consistent with the swale that was sort of shown along the center of the, of the lot line. So um, I think that's, um, that's it for my end. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that uh, that anybody has and uh, the next step I guess would be to to if there's any thing else we would need to do to further address Lance's comments because I know it was sort of different when we were sponsored to the PRC comments before but I think we can work through and make sure we address any of the of the comments with him uh, moving forward so yeah, so I'll leave it at that and I'll answer any questions anybody has okay well it appears uh, Link that it's, it's a swale and it's a version swale similar to what you had before and it's just a little maybe more defined because of the uh, grade difference in uh, lot 56 being a little higher. So uh, that's, that's really what I see here. Um, let me go to Lance. Uh, you've had a chance to look at this. I know you had expressed some concerns back in September to, on the original plan. And does this uh, more or less address those concerns? Correct. I, uh, thank you. Um, yes, I got this today. Um, I think my initial concern based on what we had seen was, you know, you had a request before you to change the grading of the site, at which point I'm just trying to get them to become more in compliant with the original approved plan, uh, i.e. a swale along the side of the property or another mechanism. Um, the swale that's proposed before you tonight does the job. I don't have any concerns or issues with this. Any board members, questions, concerns? No, I guess I'll no. talk. This is Gary. Um, yeah, I, I was one of the ones that uh, kind of concurred with with Lance and, and and tried to get that squeal put in. So I'm pleased with the with the product that we have in front of us today. Um, so I think with that, I'm uh, I could uh, vote in favor in favor of this. Any other board members? Ryan gives it the thumbs up. I agree. Okay, let's uh, move on to, uh, I see the uh, 
Vasellos are uh, with us and uh, uh, Mr. Ma Malise. Uh, do you have any comments on uh, what is being proposed? Uh, no, I, this is uh, Gary Malice. I, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I had uh, talked to John Grazios and uh, Scott and Sarah about this and, and we're good with the swale uh, if it's on the property line. Uh, that's fine. And I, and I think there's an opportunity to, to do that without without too much disruption and to accomplish, uh, in, in my view anyways, the, the possibility of uh, water mitigation going into uh, our neighbor's shard. Okay, and how about the neighbors? This is Scott and Sarah Vassello, 3217 Daisy Way. Uh, we're in agreement, yeah. Great. Okay, well, it, it took a while to get here, but we got here. Yes. And I appreciate everyone's cooperation. And uh, Link, how much, how much actual construction or disruption, or not, I shouldn't use the word disruption, uh, how much earthwork will be required to change it from what currently exists to what you're showing here? I would say it's around a foot or a foot and a half of, of change in grade, okay. just along the property line there. Okay. All right, and you're, you're showing it to be uh, constructed, then stabilized, and everything is required under uh, soil and erosion control procedures? We are. We might have to add some additional notes and things uh, um, just to make sure that we're addressing the comments before the plans are signed, but that's the intent. And I guess given the weather, uh, do you still have a window to get this done now or you have to maybe wait? Um, I, I will leave that up to John. I would assume that I'm not sure they're scheduled to get out there. Okay. Well, Hi, this is John Crezio's at Gerber Homes here. Uh, we'll coordinate with the owners, but the desire would be to wait until spring so that we could get it stabilized and seeded when we're done. Yeah, so it, I, I would agree because I don't think as it is now, it's not causing any problems per se. So it could probably get through the winter, but certainly in the uh, in the spring would have to be installed. So uh, that can be reflected in the minutes. And uh, if that's okay with everyone else on the board, let us, uh, let us proceed to a, a resolution of this, this application and... Uh, Eric, if you put the resolution up, I know Lance prepared it this afternoon. Give me one second, pulling it up. Okay, before you is a resolution that was uh, prepared uh, by Lance uh, in consideration for the plan being submitted. If I if someone, hopefully everybody had a chance to look at it. Mm -hmm. If they haven't, please uh, take a quick look and I will entertain a motion. Oh, I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve the amended final subdivision plat approval, CPN 20-054. Uh, this is the um, amended amended approval for a single family dwelling. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Karen. Bob Thanks. seconds. I have a motion by Karen, a second by Robert. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thanks again, folks. It shouldn't have taken this long, but it did. And fortunately, it's, we've come to a resolution that everybody agrees upon, and it's great. Appreciate Gerber on their cooperation and Link, thank you for preparing this so quickly. And thank you to the, uh, the residents out there for their patience and uh, cooperation. Thanks for your help. And Good John, if you, did, if, if, you didn't, if you didn't notice, John, I did close the public hearing just before we took the vote. Got it, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, moving on to uh, new public hearings.
The first one is uh, CPN 20-051. It's the Venezia Group representing Leo Gineco and Sons, owners of property, uh, quadruple zero, Canadega Farm, Townline Road. Uh, and they are requesting a single stage subdivision approval for a three lot subdivision. And uh, this has come before us tonight because it did go through the ZBA last week. Uh, they got the needed variances. So we're in position to take action on the subdivision. Uh, who we got, Rocco, Anthony, Sarah, someone to uh, present us? It says Rocco's on, but it, he usually calls in too, and I don't see a number on here. Hmm. Uh, so we might have lost him because I think he was on here a couple minutes ago. Anyone else out there uh, representing the applicant? Um. Uh, Eric, why don't you uh, go through where we are with this until Rocco gets back on? Okay. Uh, let me pull up the plans. This is kind of their last conceptual one. So uh, the zoning board asked that they provide an idea of what might be proposed along this road. That's where we get this townhouse layout. I'm sure that that's subject to change and I'm sure the planning board would want it to change. It's really not terribly creative. Um, but the main purpose of this subdivision here that we're hearing tonight now is these two parcels there. Uh, Mobile Road exists today as a private drive out to Lot six, they want to add these two lots, uh, seven and eight, um, for a similar development as to what is out there today. Right now, they are um, manufactured homes. I believe these ones are like a slab, the new ones. So, doing something similar to what's out there today. Rocco, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Very cool. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Good evening. Yeah. Do you want to take the ball, Rocco? Good. Yeah, so we, we, what we want to do is extend Mobile Road further to the west, which is going to, right after these two lots that we're going to create, we want to create these two lots right now. It's going to hook into a new road that MRB Group has kind of laid out. The town is going to construct through Janeco's lands. Um, there were some questions about mobile road, whether it was going to be private or a town road, but right now it's private. And then the zoning board, we had to continue to last month from the month before, from October to November, because they had some questions about mobile road and how it would intersect with the new road. So I kind of laid all that out and we tweaked the lots a little bit, but ultimately we did get the... The variance from the zoning board last month, so or no, well, last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was. So we should be set to go, uh, depending on how, how you guys feel about it. Um, so there you go. Any questions, just fire away. Okay, board members. Is there septic out there? No, no there's sewer. Sewer, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, the sewer runs behind, I think, all the way up to the, okay. the last yeah. existing property. Is that correct, Rocco? Correct. I think it shows on the map. Yep. I think it's like right here. I think so. Though. I didn't think it came all the way out. I thought it stopped there. I'm trying to think. So the sewer would have to be extended and easements would have to be obtained from... Uh, on that lot, even though it's owned by Janeco, but certainly uh, easements would have to be created, right, Rocco? That's correct. Okay. And I guess the laterals will require easements also. That's correct. The whole system will, yeah. All righty. Uh, um, there's been a lot of plans floating around. This, these lots have been moving up and down Mobile Road. Uh, 
a lot a lot of it had to do with <clears throat> i guess the configuration of mobile road as it ran out to the uh the new uh the new road that this proposed in the future uh this is the plan we're looking at is i guess what the zva looked at and that's what they approved uh but i know lance you have an issue with uh, the intersection the future intersection of the mobile road extension with uh call it the uh, planned road in the that follows the water line. Uh, you want to go over that? Sure. I, you know, talking with uh, the highway superintendent, I mean, I don't know that this can't be done this way. Uh, I just know that our initial dialogue was to try to get uh, the road connection more on the tangent as opposed to curvature uh, to try to prevent um, any potential issues with um the, the visual of uh, vehicles going in and out, but but also because of the water mine um, connection points. Um, I don't know that uh, as shown can't be built that way. I think I think what I'm more or less looking for is we would ultimately have to have mobile road temporarily end with a hammerhead or some kind of a turnaround that provides you know that meets the fire code requirements. We would also ask that mobile road be shown with a 60 foot wide right away at this point, strictly for providing an easement to the town for future use. I have a feeling that that easement, if it follows this alignment, would likely change in the future depending upon where we put that intersection. Um, but at least we would have an easement in place that provides the town the ability to take ownership of that road and make whatever improvements to it if, if it were to ever become a dedicated road. Um, we are still working out the water line alignment. So the road alignment could change depending upon how we make that water line along that future, the, the main, let's call it the main future road that runs through Ginecto's lot. Um, so I think I don't have a necessarily an issue as, as Rocco has, has shown it on the plan with the idea that it's likely going to change in the future. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that. I guess I, I'm assuming that there's a real possibility that that could happen. So, and I think we got room to do it. Right. I would agree. And I assume Rocco that your intent is to extend mobile road with the same type of material that the current mobile road is, which seems to be just stone. <laughs> For now, but eventually, eventually that might be a, a, a more improved road than it is right now. Yeah, let me touch on that real quickly. Um, the town met with the property owners there, Geneco, um, and some people that he was working with uh, to discuss like a potential process there and timeline. Um, so as we know that there is this large easement, which is where that transmission main is and the Auburn Trail to go over there, that the town might be considering some sort of um, special improvement district to put in this road and then you know the property owner might develop around it to help support that taxing district or whatever as part of that mobile road may be incorporated into that to be like a public road and um, this is kind of in line with the towns this would be like our gateway muo2 district not not so much uptown but um, another kind of development district that the town has had in mind since back in like the 2003 comprehensive plan could we say then, Eric, that the any improvements to mobile road would be made as part of that uh, extension? So at this point this evening, we're just looking at two lots of the dimensions shown to be considered and if approved recorded so that lots seven and eight would uh, show as, as, as designated and, and the third lot being the, the, the remainder of the property so that's a and if if that, if the road alignment changes or if, uh, subdivision lines property lines have to be moved that could be done at some future time uh if and when that uh, extension is ever put in yeah certainly the fire access turnaround oh yes yeah, so, uh, yeah i was going to say yeah if nothing else the hammerhead has to be put at the end of the extension it should be shown yeah and then i think Record. Sorry. 
Right. But, I would say the, the revision to this, once submitted for signature, will also need to show how they plan to, I mean, are we talking just the lateral off the water main, Rocco, or are you going to extend the water main? Is the water main going to, that's the question that we have, is how are we going to service the two lots with water? I'm to well, assume we gotta, it's we gotta, going to be we gotta, we gotta We got to extend the main, you know. Okay. But I guess that should be shown. The extension of the sewer should be shown. The easements required on the adjacent property should be shown. So, I mean, these are all items that uh, I guess the record plan should have. Not, not a problem. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Yeah, I, this is Gary. I, I just had a, a comment about uh, the planned other planned road and the uh, entry onto the road. From what I can look in the drawings, it looks like that road goes through um, not on this particular chart, but on the other chart that we're seeing. It looks like that road goes through somebody else's property that's not related not it's not Geneco it's whatever that is Weisner or Bernard Weisner Wiener uh, and I'm, I'm just so I'm just curious is that, uh, is that a concern how, how is it how is that road going to go through somebody else's property they, they, they just recently purchased it yeah oh, Sarah, Sarah did or that or L, Geneco LLC they own it yeah okay okay The, and the only the only other comment I had, and we, I, I'll talk about it now. We can look at it later on. Is is part one of the seeker um, references three lots, a seven, eight, and nine, um, that are that are all small. I I assume that was in a, a previous plan when we were trying to fit three lots in there instead of two. That, that's that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So do we need to change? Do we need to formally change that or anything, or did we just make a note of that tonight when we approve it? I don't know what the what the pro, right right uh, process is. Lance, uh, you're you're our seeker man. Yeah, I would say that we make a note of it and put it in the filing that is for. Yeah. Sorry, there's an echo on my end. Yeah, I think Rocco's turning up. Okay, let me uh, just go over a couple uh, outside agency reviews. Uh, we discussed MRB's letter of the 12th. Uh, the County Planning Board, uh, they were concerned about stormwater conveyance, uh, which I don't think is a big issue for these two lots. Maybe they were looking at the big picture, which is not before us this evening. Um, Rocco and this Genecos did request a waiver of the conservation subdivision, which would be part of our action this evening. Uh, the ECB, uh, they had, uh, I don't specifically remember their concerns, but they had recommended denial. Uh, Jim Fletcher had no comments. The Ag Committee uh, stated that there was no agricultural significance. Uh, the Canada Equal Fire Department and uh, Chris Jensen were both concerned about the turnaround. The hammerhead we talked about, uh, we got nothing from the town of Farmington Water. And uh, I think that pretty well covers the outside. I think we did get something from the water, it was, I guess from MRB Group, who is representing him. Um, oh, okay. But this was also an older, when they reviewed it, it was when it was still Three lots. showed that over top of it. Um, they said that they- Yeah, I, I believe, I, yeah, I think a lot of the comments and concerns that they had were, were one, the original plan showed a hammerhead and an easement with inside of their easement or this future road easement, which is on purposes, a water main easement. And so, they, they they were reluctant. They they wanted to point that out and, and, and wanted those two things to be separate. So uh, 
and, and of course, the, the revised plan does, does reflect that. With regards to a um, turnaround, can that be on the easement? Or that has to be entirely off of that easement area? Wait. So right now, yeah, the, the easement would have, the, the end turnaround would have to be outside of that easement of that future road that runs up with the townhouses. Because we don't know, we don't know when mobile road will become a dedicated road and we can't have a temporary um, uh, service road in inside of our water main easement, or in this case, Candago Farmington Water District easement. I have a question about process. And I believe that was, I, I'm sorry. Hey, sorry, Lance. So while you're talking about roads, my question is more about process. So in front of us, if we have a subdivision uh, application, how much are, I guess I'm wondering why we're, we're talking so much about the road placement when in time, we're gonna see a site plan that comes before us in the future for this. Right now, we're only talking about sub, the, the subdivision. Is that correct? Correct. That's the, only those two lots that are being carved out of that large lot. That's correct. So right. road, road placement is a primary function of subdivision approval. Um, even if it's sort of a theoretical road placement at this point, um, and we can you know, essentially plan for that in terms of the engineer will have approval and, and whatnot. And I know the Ginecos are working with the town to make this uh, feasible for both parties and that the town is going to get the road where it wants and Gineco is going to agree to that. But so the road placement is, is a subdivision issue. And yeah, we, I think in, in terms of access, any subdivision that occurs in the town, we always ask for them to provide a, a, a feasible means of access to the property. Usually they show a driveway with sight distance. In this particular case, it would require mobile road to be extended. So that's the reason for the road have to be shown with a hammerhead because currently there is no other connection point to get to these two lots. We're just simply saying that as part of that process, that when they show that hammerhead, it has to be outside of that future roadway that cuts through Geneco's parcel because there's going to be a water main that goes through there. And we can't have the, the roadway or any other uh, infrastructure inside of our easement. And if you recall folks, uh, when we look at a plan with a large area, we always try to get an idea of what, what's to come. And uh, if, if the applicant has an idea of what the future is gonna bring, it's nice to at least show that. But again, getting back to this particular application, we're looking at a three lot subdivision creating two new building lots and one re remaining lot, uh, residual lot. And that's, that's about it. And I guess if mobile road changes along the frontage of these two lots for whatever reason, uh, they would have to come back and uh, resubdivide it to make it fit. But right now they're sort of locking in on, on that frontage in front of lot seven and lot eight. So that's the way it'll, be and that's what will be recorded. Uh, Lance, uh, regarding the 60 foot right away, when's the appropriate time to ask for that? I mean, we could ask for it across lots seven and eight, which would be essentially 30 feet from center line, but uh, when would you expect that we oh, would I'm, get the 60 I'm feet? Justin, they provide the 60 foot right, right away right now on this plan over the entire length of Mobile Road that gets filed with this plan for future use by the town. It doesn't mean my understanding and Chris Nadler will have to help me out. My understanding would be that it would be an easement to the town that allows the town to take dedication in the future of a way that whenever built to, to the standards, it just prevents, what it does is it prevents, um, it gives us that access point now that we know eventually we're going to want. And I would suggest that it run the whole length as shown in the plans before you all the way out to New York State Route 332. Agreed, uh, Lance. And I'd point out the, uh, the subject of a subdivision is all of the property's owner, property owner's adjacent holdings. So 
just because it's the we're looking at two individual lots here the subdivision authority grants the planning board power to to get easements over the whole thing <laughs> that would would we include the area from the that red property line that runs top to bottom there uh and from there to the to the east uh because that's not subject to this application uh, that's a 50 foot wide right right away uh it'd be a little a little tough to go back and get that now or is that what you're asking for see, see what i'm talking about lance the existing right away a mobile road which well, isn't it all so I believe all of Mobile Road is privately owned by the entity that's before us. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. So I'm thinking since they own all of the land that encompasses the road, including Mobile Road, that if they run a 65 right away from the red line all the way straight back, and then they do 60 foot off from there on the other side of it, that would give us a 64 wide right away back to New York State 332. It would. It may have a dog in it. I don't know. It's at some point in time, that's what we're trying to consider. We're looking at that now as opposed to get it in the future. And all that would do is a placeholder. It wouldn't require the town to do any maintenance of it. It wouldn't require the town to do and look up it now, it would just simply be a placeholder like when we do it with sidewalks. That's fine. We can require a 60 foot right away from 332 to the terminus of uh, the proposed extension. That's, um, that's, that's fine. Uh, and the ownership is it's, the Genecos. It's likely going to. Yeah. Yep. And it will yeah. change in the future once we know road alignment, but at least it's a placeholder. So Gineco, uh owns and maintains Mobile Road on behalf of the properties that currently front on it? That's correct. Okay. So they will can just extend that maintenance in front of these two lots to include these lots. Okay. Do they collect any type of uh, fee from the residents for the maintenance? No. 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 All right. So it'll, it'll stay a private road and uh, we would extend, expand the right of way to 60 feet. Is that clear to everyone? I'm, I think it's clear to me. <laughs> um, so right now what we're asking for is, is like, as far as the list goes showing the water to be extended and well laterals i suppose will come at a later time when they come in for site plan the 60 foot right away the road will be extended at this point with a hammerhead turnaround the sewer main extended now laterals to be shown as part of future development and site plan The proposed development would have to be removed from the plat. You know, you certainly couldn't file this. Well, we have another drawing that shows the hammer. Ham I think this is not the right. This is just a concept. There's another. The other drawing, I think, is the actual. That one right there. That so that shows the hammerhead. Yeah, it has to be tweaked a little bit, though. Okay, but this but this is the actual plan that needs to yeah. be filed, not the other one, the other one. Yeah, I think that concept has to be put in this format. That's what you're talking about. Because in front of lot eight, there's a curvature there. And, and on this plan, it's showing as a, a straight line uh, going into the Amorite. Okay, uh, Eric, you were going through the uh, things that needed to be done. Uh, you include the, the turnaround is another item, of course, to be shown. And uh, a 60 foot right away easement be established from 332 to uh, the terminus. And also that we're only voting on two lots, not three. 
Well, it's it's a three lot essentially. It's two new lots and a residual lot, which is the remainder, which Nine. is the third oh. lot. Yeah. But it's not three new building lots. Correct, Bob. Okay. okay. I think it's all clear as mud. Uh, are we ready to? Uh, I will. Are we ready to close the public hearing? Can I uh, just ask one question on that? Uh, my name is Rory Doremus. I'm lot six on Mobile oh, Road. I am. I apologize, Rory. I didn't go out and talk to the folks in no, TV no, land. No, no it's uh, not really that important of a question. But um, what is the timeline on that road? Just curious about that. You're talking about this larger road here. Yes. Right? When, like, when would construction for that start? Um, it's not set in stone at this point, but I believe we were talking about potentially 2022, I think. I think okay. you're correct with that, Eric. I think right now the, the town has a water main project that's running through this area. That's priority number one. Then sometime in the future, I think we discussed 2022, Eric, I think you're right, as potentially moving forward with some type of a design of a roadway in this area. Then answer mobile, your question. Yes, and then mobile road becoming potentially a public road is definitely a few years down the line, like after 22? It could potentially be around the same time. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, Rory. And I'll solicit anybody else that's out there that'd like to comment. Chuck, if I if I could answer that, uh, add to what Eric and Lance said. I think a very tentative timeline is maybe in 22, uh, but at this point the town is exploring its options and, and has not secured financing. So the town will get a, a timeline in place in the somewhat near future, but at this point we really don't have a hard and fast date. I just want to qualify what Lance and Eric just said. Thanks, Chris. Okay. John, okay. make sure you get that on the record. Okay. Yeah, it. Got it. With uh, no one else commenting now, I'll close the public hearing. And we will move on to deliberations regarding a uh, seeker uh -huh. and subdivision approval. While he's pulling up the seeker, we realize part one will have to be revised to reflect the current number of lots. Okay, this is an unlisted action, um, realizing that part one has to be revised. Uh, Lance has supplied us with part two and part three. Hopefully we've all looked at those. And we're ready to move on. So if someone would like to make a motion, uh, let's do it separate since it is an unlisted action. So if I could have a, a motion on just the seeker, please. Hey, this is Bob. I'll make a motion to accept uh, the seeker resolution unlisted action. Uh, at 000 Mobile Road R-1-20 in the Agricultural 2 Zoning District CPN 20-051, the single stage subdivision plan approval with that one change that we were just talking about. Okay, on the seeker, uh, the, uh, the change being the change of uh, part one. Part one. Okay, uh, have a second, please. Second. Thank you, Karen. Motion by Bob, second by Karen. All in favor of the seeker, unlisted action, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll move on to the uh, subdivision. And I guess here, if we, maybe the, we'll, we'll take care of, Let's do what added conditions we want to impose or any, any amendment to the conditions. Uh, we got Lance's letter if in I, there. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. 
Mr. Chairman, a lot of a lot of the conditions that were discussed in terms of the roadway being extended, uh, the 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 conceptual plan being removed, um, the main being extended, the sanitary, those are all in my MRB comment letter. Uh, that's reflected as condition number um, four. Um, I also pulled out what I would be two uh, additional conditions. Um, and, that, and, and those were five, which is the extension of mobile road, and then six, which is the right of way easement to be provided. I'm sorry, you said you pulled them out. If you feel yeah. that we need to pull out more specifically, oh, what do you mean? Okay. okay. Call it out. Call it out. Okay. okay. You said pull it out. Yeah, you pull it out. I thought you were going to remove them. <laughs> That's a, this, this guy's from Victor. <laughs> Talk a different language. All righty. So we've got uh, a, <laughs> Resolution before us for a subdivision approval subject to uh, six conditions, uh, one being Lance's letter of the 12th, which I think goes over the other issues that we discussed. So it'll be up to Lance to make sure they get on the final plan before he signs them. So uh, all that being said, uh, may I have a motion to uh, act on this resolution? Yep. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve a single stage subdivision plan for 0000 Mobile Road, Geneco, Leo Geneco and Sons Incorporated, CPN 20 051, uh, with the, I think it was six. Scroll up. Right. I'll second that. Six conditions as stated in the resolution. Yep. Okay. Got a motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unhave it. Okay. You're off, Rock. Uh, mm -hmm. Do give Sarah the good news. I will do it. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good night. Take care, Rock. Good night, everybody. Okay, moving on. I'm going to uh, open our public hearing for uh, right. CP. Excuse me. I'm going to open a public hearing for CPN 20071. Buffalo Solar Inc. Um, uh, in coordination with Liam McMahon representing Christopher Richland, owner of property at uh, 4459 Middle Cheshire Road. And they are seeking a special use permit and a single stage site plan approval for a solar energy system installation on the reference property. Uh, I think, is there someone here from Buffalo? Yes, uh, my name is Quinn Porzio. I work with uh, Liam. Um, we are both project managers here at Buffalo Solar. Okay, Quinn, if you could give us uh, some background. Yeah, so uh, we're seeking a special use permit for uh, a residential ground mounted uh, solar system. Um, all of the energy produced by the system will be um, either immediately consumed by the house on the property or it will be um, quote unquote, sent back to the grid and stored uh, for future use um, for like at night when the sun's obviously not out or, um, you know, there is a slight overproduction in the summer so that you can um, have some credits during the winter when your production might be a little bit lower. Um, we are about 200 and I think 30 square feet over the uh, allowed a thousand, um, which is why we are going for the um, special use. We are also seeking a waiver on the decommissioning plan as well as a O and M agreement because this is a residential property and not a commercial um, installation. Um, so it's all being consumed by, like I said, on site by the home. Okay. How, uh, how was that? How was the square footage calculated? Was that um, total area of disturbance or is that size of the rate? How was that kind of figured out? The uh, square footage we uh, calculated was the size of the panels, basically. So each, there's, it, it, as you can see in, in, on the screen, there are two arrays. Uh, so we kind of considered each of those individually. 
um, so that the total square footage is for each of those two arrays added together. Okay, and that is just over a thousand. It for... is yes, it is a thousand. Uh, I believe it is on this page or the next page. I believe it's one thousand two hundred twenty-seven, something like that. Yeah, she, sheet six does list the total array coverage uh, regarding the parcel. So we did give you the square footage. Um, as so the panels were installed at a zero degree tilt, so just flush on the ground. So that square footage would be roughly 1,444 square foot. And then at the fixed tilt that we're going to be installing them at, at 30 degrees, the array will cover uh, 1,277 square feet. So, Okay. That was one of my questions. I couldn't, yeah. All right. Roll, this Gary. is Ryan. I'm Go sorry. Ahead, Ryan. This seems like a really detailed plan for a residential solar. So really the only reason we're seeing this is because it just exceeded the square footage. I mean, I don't feel like this is a huge yep. solar project like we've seen in the past. This seems like a no brainer to me. Is there something I'm missing, Chris? I mean, uh, that I'm missing, Eric? No, I don't think so. No, that, that, and that was kind of where I was leading to how that thousand square foot was uh, determined. If it was total area of disturbance vice the array, I kind of would have said, hey, I'm not sure that really is falls into, uh, you know, what we really considered. But if it's array size, I kind of understand it now, I guess. Yep. Um, so, my, yes. So I think, yeah, just kind of like uh, Ryan said, I think this is a good, good plan. It's a, it's, it's for residential use you know, go for it. It's great. Um, the, the only comment I would have um, is a screening on the west side. I don't know. I, I can't honestly, see I'll, it. I'll tell you, I didn't go out there, but did, did anybody else go out there? Can you, are you, are you going to be able to see this from the road? I live um, out there. You can't see it from the road. You're not going to see it at all. Okay. Not at all. The, okay. the driveway is nearly like a kilometer long anyway, so. Yeah, you can't see it. Okay, all right, so that was one thing. And then the second one is, um, I guess the request, that no fencing uh, be required, and I just don't know what kind of, from safety, safety perspective or from wildlife or anything like yeah. that, that's something that we ought to consider some sort of a, a fencing or something just so to protect uh animals or anything else from getting in there and getting caught or getting you know injured or anything like that so uh if i could touch on that so all of our wiring per uh state regulations uh we, we work with uh nyserda and my son which uh has their own uh, solar handbook that we have to follow and we are subject to uh random um inspections and they uh take into account all of that as far as uh not not being easily accessed as far as animals getting to the wiring and stuff. Um, so the reason we were kind of requesting no fence was because this is still on a on a residential scale and most or actually pretty much all of our, our residential projects don't typically uh, our scope of work uh, require a, uh, a, a fence. Um, so that's kind of what our, our thought process was because it was still a residential like uh, a property um, and we are following the, the guidelines put out by the state and the NY Sun and the NYSERDA program um, that there are, um, there is, uh, you know, our wire management is in a way that uh, it's not easily accessible to get to those cables. Our cables between the array and the attachment point are, are underground or in conduit per you know uh, national and and uh, state uh, codes as far as electrical codes. So that's kind of our thought process on the the fence around the exact array. Hey Quinn, this is uh, Robert. I had a question. Um, yeah. Why? Uh, I, and I understand the uh, homeowner owns that field, but due to agricultural, there is a farmer farming it, right? Mm -hmm. Why was the uh, decision to go? Uh, front to back versus one long linear line to save more uh, field space. Yeah, so uh, our original plan was actually to go one linear uh, array and the homeowner was uh, looking to kind of, as you can see, there is a, a, a barn or a garage on the property. Right. They were kind of hoping to kind of tuck it back there so that they 
wouldn't see as much of the array on a day to day. Obviously, coming down the driveway, you would see it. So we tried to tuck it behind that garage. Um, and in order to do that while still kind of staying away from the tree line along the back of the property, uh, it was easier to split it up into two arrays kind of behind each other than it would be one long array kind of more behind the, uh, the shed. Thanks, Green. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, I was I was thinking about going through all the uh, standards that had to be met for a special use permit, but I, I don't think we I, we talked about some of them the uh, the fencing and the landscaping. Uh, obviously, the O and M plan is uh, more typical of a commercial enterprise. Uh, the decommissioning is to make sure we don't have an orphan system sitting out there. Should somebody pick up stakes and walk away? Uh, and as far as a waiver from professional plans, I <laughs> professionally prepared plans, these are very well, well done and very, very much detailed. So I don't see any reason not to consider a waiver of that. Uh, you had said, I think I'd read in the transmittal letter, Quinn, that uh, yeah. about 102% of the annual energy requirement for the home will be generated from this facility. Uh, right. So that, remaining 2% is what goes back to the grid. I know it's seasonal. Sometimes you know, in the winter, you're drawing more off the grid and in the summer, you're sending more to the grid, but, Correct. Uh, but overall it's about a hundred, it, it services about 102% of the uh, needed energy for the property. Correct, yeah. And we usually like to give that buffer of, of between two and six, just because uh, with the, the, obviously solar is very reliant on the weather you know, if we have a year where we have more snow or we have a year that has more rain and more clouds, that, that kind of buffer gives us the uh, ability to still offset 100 should we have really poor weather that year. You had said that the panels were uh, 30 degrees. Uh, are they fixed year round at 30 or Correct. is there any reason to change that angle given the flow of the sun? Yeah, this uh, particular setup is a fixed ground mount system. Um, there are other systems out there that you can adjust, but our system that we are installing is fixed. Uh, the reason we go with 30 is you get the best uh, production uh, year round off of that particular degree. Anybody uh, in the audience want to speak on behalf or? I have questions on this application. Okay. Um, looking at outside reviews, uh, the county planning board did not give us any type of response. Well, they gave us a response, I think, but it, it really didn't say one way or the other as far as uh, endorsing it or uh, denying it. So uh, it remains a question mark. Um, uh, Chris Jensen, uh, he had only said that, uh, brought to our attention, the need for a waiver for the professionally prepared plan. Uh, the ag committee felt there was no harm being, uh, done by this application. And, uh, I think that pretty well covers it. Anybody else on the board have any uh, questions, concerns before I close the hearing? Nope, I'm ready to make no. a motion as soon as ready you to... close the hearing. All right, the hearing is closed and you can make a motion. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve CPN 520-071, uh, a seeker resolution type two action and the CPN 20-071 site plan that includes a waiver of a professionally developed plan. So I'm bundling those together. Okay. Uh, we still have the site plan too. Uh, why don't we, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, staff, uh, as far as the waiver of the uh, decommission plan and the O&M plan, that would go in the uh, special use permit, I would assume. So there's a separate resolution? Yeah, there's a, yes. there's going to be three. There'll be three eventually. Yeah, okay. yeah okay. I'm sorry. I met my uh, 
motion to include uh, this type two action, uh, special use permit and single stage site plan approval for CPN 20071 that includes the waiver of a professionally developed plan. I'll second that. Okay, I got a motion and a second. Uh, John, just make sure you uh, list them in the order that they're supposed to be. I think site plan comes before SUP, right? Yes. Here, site plan and yeah. special use. Yep. Oh, okay. All right, so just make sure that's the way we're handling it. It's the same. Make me sound good, John. Make me sound good, will you? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but Ryan gets to carry the weight of all three motions on his broad shoulders. <laughs> And Karen uh, comes just up. Just for and... clarity. Yes, Lance. Um, the waiver regarding the O&M plan and the decommissioning plan, you're telling me you only want that reflected on the special use permit as a condition. Is that correct? Well, I, I knew it would apply there. If it applies also to the site plan, uh, have at it. Nope. But I, I just want to make I, it, it, it's I don't a think requirement. It does. I that... just want to make sure because. It's a requirement yeah. of the special use plan to have an O and M and a decommission plan, and that's that's what we're waiving. Nope. But if you want to include in the site plan, that would be uh, fine by me. I, I I think I'd recommend we I, just put it on the special use permit. Can okay, you do so that? Then site plan conditions of approval it only reflect six conditions. I just want to make sure that's cool because that's not what we're showing. Uh, okay, and you pulled out. Yeah, number seven. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right, so we have uh, a motion and a second to consider a, a type two seeker, a site plan approval, single stage site plan approval, as well as a special use permit for a property in Middle Cheshire to construct a, a solar array. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No one's opposed? Okay. So moved. Thank you, uh, Quinn. Yes, thank you, guys. It's an thank awesome project. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Come back and see us again. Oh, we will. Have a good Thanksgiving, oh, we everybody. Will. <laughs> Sound like a threat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we will. I think I got another one on the uh, in the hopper. Okay, we will move on to our third public hearing, which I will now open in regards to our friends at McFarland Johnson representing the Ontario County Industrial Development Authority Agency, excuse me, who own property at 2450 Brickyard Road, and they are seeking a single stage site plan approval for the development in the industrial zoning district for the construction of a 3,000 square foot general aviation terminal building. Uh, I know Bob is here with us. Good evening, Bob. I also know, uh, I assume someone's here representing McFarland Johnson. Yeah, this is Adam Persino with McFarland Johnson. Good evening. And this is Bob Mincer from uh, Ontario County Industrial Development Agency, uh, manager at the airport. Um, uh, Chuck, can you hear me all right? Sure can. Great. You're looking, looking good. Well, uh, as you said, I'm here tonight with um, Adam Frasino. He's the uh, project manager for this, um, this construction of this facility. Um, I just want to start out with uh, uh, reminding you that we were before this board uh, about a year ago presenting a preliminary site plan um, for the for the airport to kind of give you a, some direction of what we would do, what we plan for development there. And uh, one of the first items up uh, was the uh, for the terminal building, and uh, that's what we're here seeking uh, site plan approval for tonight. Um, we hope to act before this, but uh, you know we've all had suffered some <laughs> delays to this year. So finally, we're in, and uh, hopefully, we're uh, looking at uh, construction to start um, first thing in the spring. Um, first, I'd like to um, clarify. Because uh, the, the question comes up often when you hear a, a, the, the word terminal in airport, I just want to tell you what it, what, it, what it is not, since this is a general aviation airport and a, not a, a commercial service. There are 
there's no ticket counters, there's no badge claim, there's, there's no um, uh, TSA or security checkpoints. Um, what it does do is it, it's, it, it primarily it serves as a focal point for, uh, for the airfield from both the, the air side for aircraft landing. So there's no mistaking where, where you go, where, where you go to you know, fuel up or park or where the headquarters is for the airport. And, and, and also for, from the land side, you know, you know, people driving in, where to pick up passengers, where to you know, take their flight lesson. This is, this is primarily the focal point. And uh, um, it's largely the design of the building and the location of it was uh, based off of FAA guidelines and um, uh, the Air Research Cooperation Board that, that provides um, basically uh, guidelines about uh, how and what, what what the facility should look like. Um, so what, this, what the building does do, it, it serves as, um, uh, supports the, the FBO. That's just a, uh, an acronym for fixed base operator, which is uh, an airfield based business, primarily uh, servicing transient aircraft. Um, it's flight crews and passengers. Uh, services include parking, fueling, uh, arranging ground transportation, overnight accommodations, catering, you name it, whatever anybody needs when they're traveling. This is it's a, kind of a one-stop shop here in an airport our side. Um, additionally, um, terminals uh, is designed uh, to separate, uh, how separate uh, aeronautical businesses such as a flight school or a tour operator, even a charter flight business. Um, it also houses a uh, crew rest area for uh, flight crews to catch some uh, rest between flights. You see a lot of flight crews coming in here and, uh, you know, they're there for hours. So uh, uh, rest and sleep is sometimes critical and also a place for them to, you know, uh, uh, conduct flight planning and, and work with air traffic control for their for the departing flights. Um, there's also a small uh, conference room uh, available to basically anybody. Um, there's a fairly frequent, um, frequently there's there, there people meet um, for business meetings and they, they would meet uh, um, with one of the parties that actually flies in. Some of it's even just politicians coming in and, and you know, uh, glad handing for, you know, 10 minutes and they're, they're gone. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of aeronautical use for a conference room like this, but uh, um, I, I see it, I foresee it being used a lot as uh, from a community side too. It'll be available to the general public um, as well. It's just kind of an alternative um, venue for, for meetings. Um, also, the, the, the IDA is certainly aware of the uh, first time travelers to our region and the, in the, in the impression that we want to leave to uh, visitors coming into the region. Um, you know, not only we want to make a first impression, good first impression, but um, we want to use this facility in a way to promote uh, the region. I mean, we're still developing a business plan around this facility, but, you know, we foresee, you know, retail, not only for pilot supplies, but, you know, local products being sold there and certainly uh, presenting uh, some of the, uh, you know, tourism opportunities in here. Um, I can just and anecdotally from this 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 summer alone, I, I think there is probably, I would say, minimum of 500 travelers, new travelers into this region that that traveled through the the Canada Airport. Um, I spoke I speak to a lot of them, uh, and basically, you know, I find out that part of my job is become a tour uh, uh, operator that uh, <laughs> they're constantly looking for directions for places to eat. Uh, places to stay, uh, you know, and, and tours to go on, wine tours, uh, you know, just to visit the region, they, they just pop out of nowhere sometimes. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, of course, you're always invited out to sit there for a day. Every day is interesting out there. Um, on top of all, I, I envision this building being a, a, a gathering place, not just for pilots and passengers, but for, for the, the community as well. Um, you know, the goal is to create a, a comfortable facility for all our visitors uh, designed to be more of a, uh, more like a hotel lobby than, than a, a bus station. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people that will come and sit in their cars or hang on the fence um, just 
observing aircraft coming and going. And uh, it's, I, I talk to a lot of those people and they and find out quite often, they just wanna be a part of it. So this, you know, part of this building is some of the elements we design into it, such as the patio, the observation deck, is to help facilitate that. And frankly, they're potentially for, uh, future customers of, you know, of, of a flight school or somebody who really wanted to take a ride or, or take a flying lesson. Um, so that kind of lays out, you know, our, some of the thoughts we had in this design. Um, all these things are, are, are currently taking place down in the, the southern end of the airport and the, uh, adjacent to the existing parking lot. And we're operating out of a, a construction trailer, which serves every purpose that this, this, this facility, this much grander facility is gonna do for us. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I'm gonna turn it over to Adam for, you know, talk about the nuts and bolts of it and certainly answer questions uh, later. Okay, um, so to, to, to second what Bob's saying and to, to kind of get into more of the engineering based um, approach here, uh, it is a 3000 square foot building. Um, it does have some public space and some uh, employee space, we'll call it um, a break room type area. So you'll notice on the site plan, we do have separate access points um, for each one of those areas. Uh, if you if you don't mind uh, scrolling over to the site plan, and I will uh, point some things out. I, I will also ask the question, is it possible that I could share my screen at, at some point as well? We do have a, a 3D model of the building. Um, I don't know if you guys do that uh, in Canandaigua as far as these meetings or do you just typically? Um... I don't see anybody on the call that's gonna try to share anything inappropriate, so. Uh, see if you can share it right now. Okay. Well, it says the host disabled participant screen sharing. I see you. Yep. Uh, okay. Give it a try now. Oh, there we go. Here it is. Yep. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Right now there's just a window opened up and then the models behind it. No. Uh, yeah. No. Hmm. We're just seeing the array of people. I got a border around my screen. It's using means that it's sharing. Oh, maybe I have to hit share. Huh. Yeah. That helps. <laughs> There we are. <laughs> it was just giving me a preview. I apologize. Okay, can you see what I'm looking at now? I got a, a window here and then the 3D model behind. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like to kind of just be able to point at the site plan as I talk, as if I would if I was uh, in front of in front of you guys live in person. Um, so I just want to kind of walk through the the site plan. So, oh, I opened the wrong file. Give me a second. This is my marked up file. Those are the changes we made since. Uh, since submitting, which I'll talk through. Okay, here we go. So as I was noting, we have the uh, a side entrance here that's it's primarily for employees. There's also an HVAC system here that we are calling for some vinyl fence screening. You have the main front entrance on the land side. We have ADA parking off to the side with the ADA accessibility route to the front door. Um, we have another side entrance, which would be more like, um, we're calling it kind of our, our utility corridor, uh, but you got the restrooms that are here, you got uh, an office here and you got the flight school. So again, kind of a side entrance to the building. And then you've got kind of the main spine of the building and you've got the main doorway out to the air side where there would be a patio area. Um, with this, we've got 25 parking spots of which we have the one uh, handicap spot that I mentioned. Uh, code requires 15, so we got uh, more, more than the code requirement. Uh, Bob does anticipate potentially having, as he noted, hosting some events. You could see maybe as many as 25 people in the building, and that's kind of the, the justification for the 25 parking spaces. Um, we do call for some site lighting. 
that wasn't on the plans we submitted. The, the exterior lighting scheme was not uh, established yet, but we are proposing two site light poles as well as, and I'll zoom in, as well as um, we're trying to do some real nice decorative exterior lighting. So there's gonna be some lighting under these overhangs. Every overhang from each doorway will have some lighting and um, that'll obviously light the doorways and then you got the parking lot lighting. There may be a need for a wall mounted lighting to uh, provide some additional lighting for the handicapped parking spot. And then we're proposing some bollard lights along the front of the sidewalk and concrete patio area. Um, it's, it's, it's not gonna mimic, but it's kind of gonna give you the feel of like you have all of the lighting along the taxiway it's to kind of give it that airport feel uh, if you're walking down this walkway, you know, coming to and from maybe a private jet and walking into the into the terminal. As Bob mentioned, you know, that's that's the whole point of this is to be a nice welcome mat to the uh, Canandaigua, the town of Canandaigua in the area, in the Finger Lakes area. Um, the other thing I wanted to note was, and I'm kind of hitting some of the comments um, we did originally show on the construction safety and phasing plan. We originally had the construction staging area off to this area that's currently like a grass brush area. Um, we are going to move that into the parking lot to just limit our disturbance area uh, for the project. Um, another comment that was brought up uh, as part of the review by MRB was the uh, limits of disturbance and whether we warranted for a SWIP. The area of disturbance is this area here with all the grading around the building, our leach field and then the utilities connecting over to the leach field. We're at about 0.82 acres of disturbance. Um, so we are still under that acre threshold. Um, we don't anticipate um, submitting a formal SWIP. However, all the plans and all the notes on the plans will follow the New York State DEC requirements for erosion and sediment control. Uh, there just won't be uh, any need for post-construction stormwater management. Um, and as another level of comfort, all the water from the site does flow down to this ditch, which then directs over at the uh, west end of the airport with a very large infiltration basin um, that I'll say stores the water, but it's designed not to store the water, it's designed to infiltrate it because um, you don't want standing water at an airport uh, for uh, bird reasons. <clears throat> so um, I don't want to get into too much of the details. We do have a formalized um, response letter established and after this meeting, we'll, we'll finalize it and submit it with, uh, based on any comments we received today. Um, so I won't go through the whole list, but those are a couple of things I wanted to highlight. Um, as Bob noted, noted, we're trying to go with more of a hotel feel, not a bus station feel for this. So we do have a landscaping plan and we will have some foundation landscaping going around the building. Um, we will have a lighting scheme for the Canandaigua Airport light to make it you know, look more like, like you're showing up to a hotel, not a bus station. So my, my question was, it's all, it is entirely private though, right? When you say it's non-commercial, it's, it's privately funded and privately used. Um, it is not privately funded. Um, this is a New York State DOT aviation grant. Okay. That is, that is funding this project. So it is a public project. However, that being said, um, the airport in its current state and after the, even after this project is constructed, the public will not have access to this parking lot unless the gates are opened on off of Thomas Road. Okay. Um, I, I, a sneak peek to potential future is there is a grant application in to upgrade Lightline Drive as we're calling this road uh, to become a public road. However, that's still to be determined that grant has not been awarded or anything at this point. That's hypothetical. Um, Wait, would you put fencing up after that then, if that became public? Correct. Part yeah. of that grant is all the appropriate FAA required security fencing. And then 
the actual terminal building would then be your barrier from yeah. secure versus non-secure. Right. The fencing would come around the road, come down, and then the public would have access to this parking lot, but you'd have to physically go through the building to get to the air side. Yeah. We're not there yet, but we are planning for the future um, should that grant be awarded to the airport and to the IDA. How can we okay. support that grant? <laughs> well, I believe, well, I shouldn't say I believe, I know it's already been um, submitted and I know that we did have uh, quite a few letters of support Correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, and, and some of them did come from town representatives. So uh, we did receive the town's support on that grant. Um, and now it's a matter of awesome. uh, getting the money for it. Great, yeah. I got one question. Kathy wrote, wrote us a, a wonderful letter of support for that. Good. So I really appreciate that. Yep. That's great, I have one, I have at least one question. Yep. Love these projects, Bob knows that. Like this is such a huge asset to our community. Love seeing this move forward. Is there a bar where we can maybe take a, a, someone on a date and see a, have a drink and watch the planes fly in? Oh. Well, I, I tell you, Ryan, it's um, we really got we really want to make this a, a community place, and and we, and we facilitated this with the anticipation of a, of either a grant for a, 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 a separate but adjacent building that would support a restaurant. And uh, I mean, certainly the, the, I know the air side can support it at, at times and certainly in the certain summer season. And I think we would get a lot of um, community support from that. Um, so other than that, the, uh, you know, we're looking at this facility here. Uh, it's, it's really some flex space uh, that we're creating here. <laughs> no reason why that it can't be uh, utilized for um, you know, evening events, wine tastings, uh, such like that in, in the evenings. I mean, it's just, we want to make the, the most out of the space as we can. And we really want to bring as many people as we possibly can in to, uh, you know, to see it, experience it. Well, I, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I remember growing up and going to the Buffalo airport just to see the planes come in. People like to go and have, they want to be entertained. And they go to the lake, they go to the lakefront. We have, we're, we're developing our north part of the, of the lake. This is a whole untapped resource of economic development. And like you say, it welcomes people in our community. They wanna get off a plane. Some people are stressed out. They might wanna have relax a little bit. Uh, this is, it's just, it's an awesome vision, ready to move forward and support this right away and motion this thing. <laughs> hey, I, I got a question though, Ryan, before you. Uh, Bob. Go, ahead, Bob. go ahead, I'm all, I'm yes, all Bob. Bob, it's uh, great to see you come out of the trailer finally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I missed you yesterday. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I, your seeker though calls out a 6,400 square foot building, not a 3,000 square foot building. I think that has to be changed. I'm not aware uh, of that. You you might be getting confused, Bob. Uh, we did submit a separate application oh. for a hangar. Oh. Uh, yeah, we'll that's, be that's, well, that's, that's what we'll other... That's at the other end of the airport, and that's going to be a 6,000 square foot hangar. It, maybe when you were reviewing it, Bob, uh, we might have already had the other documents up online. I know I got yep. confused yesterday, too, looking at it. And so checking out the new application when uh, the older one was kind of further down. Okay, the so that's our admin then. Okay, our stuff. Yep. <clears throat> um, is there any problem there, Eric, with the ballot lights uh, with the town code for lighting? Uh, the up light uh, lighting versus down lighting? Well, they have to be dark sky compliant. I think you can still up light and have a dark sky compliant as long as it's kind of cut off by some sort of roof line or something like that. Uh, but it does have to be dark sky compliant. Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. It's neat. Idea. No, I think we can pull that off and absolutely dark sky compliant. You know, I I, I can't stand glare from any lighting and um, yeah. I can have it on the facility now, so. Uh, certainly, it's not appropriate at the airport. So, the parking lot lightings will be your your typical. This is what we're proposing at this time. Will be your typical dark sky compliant LED lighting shining down. The only thing that's under consideration right now is the sign, um, and that would just be a very small light. And we've talked about having it downlit or uplit or having it kind of highlighted behind the sign. Exactly. Uh, either way, they would definitely be dark sky compliant. Uh, one of one of Bob's goals here is to kind of, is to create that uh, 
if I can get back to the right view, is to create that uh, stargazing deck, so to speak, right here. And the last thing we're going to want is to have up up lights. Yep. Um, yep. And uh, is your sewer septic uh, already approved? Is it going to have to be a raised bed out there? It, I didn't see. We're not. Yeah, there were a lot of comments on the septic system. Um, I wanted to kind of clarify some of those things with this board. Um, so first of all, the um, the security building septic system is operating just fine. Um, it's been installed for eight years now. And Bob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was a couple of years ago um, that they had some issues with it and they found out that it just, the tank had never been cleaned. It just suffered from a lack of maintenance. But um, yeah, since I've been out there and we've been, we, we've got that on a routine schedule now. Um, yeah, it, it operates fine. Um, and. You know, for this project, we we dug a series we dug a series of holes out there, what, three or four of them, uh, you know, five by five deep, and and really it's 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 a lot of topsoil, you know, uh, you know, two to three feet of topsoil on top of uh, some clay. So we dug down there and perked the clay. Uh, you know, Adam has the calculations, and 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 the the design of the system will be based on on that. So yep. I'm satisfied. We have we have it. I, I certainly would prefer to run this to a sanitary sewer uh, and, and hope that will be the case someday that we'll see it come down Brickyard Road a little bit more. Uh, maybe our friend Rocco will help, help us out <laughs> with that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm satisfied with uh, what well, you will be and the health department and everybody else will be satisfied yeah. that we can uh, thanks, build thanks, an appropriate uh, septic so, system. So as far as the septic system design, it's a, it's a traditional system using using chambers, not pipe. So that does add an extra benefit to it. Um, but we did, as Bob noted, we tested about 10 different locations. We did 10, 10 different perk tests and in order to select the, the position we did. And we did do test pits in those locations. And Bob intentionally left those open for a couple of weeks afterwards so that we could continue to monitor and you could see if there was any standing water, anything like that inside those test pits, which there was not. Um, and so, you know, we're pretty confident that the tests we performed were are, are reliable and that the system will work. Um, also, during the geotech reports, you'll notice the septic system is not that far from the building. Um, the geotech borings we did for the actual building showed that groundwater was between 14 and 15 feet between those two different uh, borings. So we're pretty confident that the groundwater level is definitely is definitely low enough to accept the uh, affluent water from from the septic system and with the end goal of at some point hopefully having a public sewer system come down uh, into this area um, one of the other comments was you know what about other buildings are they all going as anything else can be tied into this uh, no no other buildings are being tied into this uh, septic system it's so for this building it's not for any other future buildings either if future buildings come in, uh, we'll have to go through the same process again and figure out if we can get public sewer down or if we can design their own septic system or expand this one. We would not tie in any additional buildings to this system without reanalyzing everything, obviously. So um, so it's been designed just for, just for this building. We did design it, the septic system for uh, 25 employees, which is, a, which is a real stretch because you know, on a daily basis, um, Bob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but on a daily basis, the airport has, you know, three-ish, three or four employees. Um, and then, you know, you get your visitors that come in, you get, um, you know, so you're on the order of magnitude of five to 10 people uh, per day uh, at, at the airport. If you have the flight school going, maybe you're at 15 or so, but we went with 25 just because we assumed, you know, maybe certain days there will be an event or something like that. Um, so I think we've, we've looked at this fairly conservatively um, and we'll respond formally to the comments. And if we need to tweak the system, you know, we're open to that, but um, we, we were trying to be conservative in our septic system design. And I think we think Bob's comfortable with it, but we just need to go through the approval process. Um, and on that note, we did um, reach out, we are not in actually, this building is not in and the septic system is not in the Candewa watershed. 
only a small portion of the airport is actually in the watershed. So the approval process um, is, is gonna go through the code enforcement officer. And, and if he wants to tap into the um, health department for their guidance, he absolutely can, but it, the code enforcement officer will be the one that will review and approve uh, the septic system. So we have not formally submitted that yet, but we will uh, right after Thanksgiving here, after this meeting um, to get that ball rolling. I'm sorry, I have a question about that and I'm, I'm sorry to take more time. I, I feel like we, we this is a no brainer, but uh, you just mentioned because you we're not in the Canandaigua Lake watershed that it doesn't, you, you will not, that I thought that the rule was that because Canandaigua is a partner in the watershed that we still, uh, our town wide, that's a town wide policy. Eric, isn't that correct? No, it's just in the watershed. So, so does that, north for something, yeah, for review and approval of a septic system design, if you're in the Candago Lake watershed, it goes to the watershed for its approval. If you're not in the watershed, then it goes to the code enforcement officer and or New York State DOH for review. And, and for residential properties also? Yeah, in the right. town. Yep. Ooh, that. All right. I am not follow. I don't got to follow them rules. All right. I'm ready <laughs> to move forward on this. So, if there's any other questions, I won't. I won't go into any more detail on these response on these comments and our responses. Uh, but if you got want me to discuss any of them in particular, I'd be happy to uh, to discuss further. Adam, I wanted to ask you about flight path road are, are there any plans to improve the condition of that it's a it's a gravel drive now it'd be a shame to have a gravel drive going up to this uh, nice facility with a paid parking lot are your plans to improve uh, flight path uh not not as part of this project um that was submitted uh for an additional grant um and we are doing everything um on this project you know we are going to be paving and making the parking lot nice because then that is not included in that other grant um, there's hey adam is it is it possible for you to pull up a, a rendering of what was submitted for the grant for the improvements of the road <laughs> um this grant was submitted uh, uh i believe late spring early summer this year uh to the new york state dot i believe it has a a pretty substantial chance of uh, being awarded uh, of course you know, no telling now with the, with the state and the condition it is, but uh, I, I know our governor is very, very pro airport and uh, infrastructure of this type. Uh, and this is, a, this is a good project that met a lot of their benchmarks. Um, and uh, it, it really, it involves not only, uh, uh, you know, the pavement, but, you know, a, a, a divided uh, segmented uh, roadway system leading up to here. It's, uh, you know, the, the fences aren't, you know, barbed wire and intrusive. They're not even galvanized. Um, it's, 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 it's supposed to be a nice, a nice approach with a walking path coming from, from uh, Thomas Road up to here. Um, so well, I think my, my question was short of getting it uh, up to condition for dedication uh, in, the, in the interim, uh, it would be a shame. I don't know how long this, the time lag, lag would be between you know, doing this project and eventually uh, getting that grant and doing the, the improvements, but uh, you would just think it's not very inviting to <clears throat> come in that gate with a, a gravel road and 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 then come up to this 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 uh, uh, fine looking facility with all its amenities. Uh, I, I would just think for the purposes of of uh, of aesthetics, you'd want to dr dress that up and uh, sort of tie it into the parking lot and bring it out to Thomas Road. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Chuck. Um, and, and we will, we'll dress up the gravel as much as, as possible. And we'll have to come up with an alternative in the event that this, this uh, grant isn't awarded. Um, you know, because it, you know, as, as you said, it just, it doesn't look, doesn't look right. And, and frankly, the, the fencing is one of the, is a big element with that. And because this is a 24 hour facility, it presents a logistics problem not having having that roadway and, and fencing and gating uh, situated there. So, um, you know, it's, it's, 
one step at a time. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. There certainly wasn't enough money in this project. I mean, this this grant for the, this submission for this um, terminal didn't even anticipate where it was going to be located. It was going to be down down on the other end. But this is a a much better facility in a much better location. So you know, you kind of have to suck it up in in the uh, you know entry format yeah. situation as it is. Speaking of that, Bob, I was looking for my copy of the master plan. I couldn't find it, but so the master plan shows the terminal being further south, or does or, is, or does the master plan show it being in this location? Well, it's uh, uh, it does it shows it in this location. This is uh, where we presented it um, mm -hmm. to the planning board last year. It's basically central uh, uh, center of the airport uh, itself, uh, certainly center of the runway section. Um, uh, well, this this is where we we had located it. I think when the when the grant was originally submitted, it proposed putting it basically where the trailer is now. Um, already, it's it's a it just congests things down down there trying to operate out of that end. So mm -hmm. this makes the most sense um, altogether. Uh, I'm just happy we're able to put this uh, put together a building that we have that we have designed and have it located where we want to locate it and even squeeze a septic system into it you know uh, unfortunately it's 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 the uh, the access to it presents um presents a you know problems yeah it's a shame it's not that attractive um uh, okay uh anybody else have any comments yeah this is um gary i um i, I had a, a whole series of questions i think a lot of them uh, have already been answered through, through all this discussion. So, but, uh, so the only couple things left, um, I was wondering if you had considered putting some landscape, maybe some trees or something, or a, something in the parking lot to provide some shade um, for the cars and a little more aesthetic looking, natural looking, instead of just a big uh, parking lot of asphalt. So I, that would be one thing I would kind of ask you to, to consider extending the landscaping out into the I don't know if we have a little median with some trees in the middle or something like that, um, but that might make it look a little nicer. Um, so that was one one comment I, I kind of wanted to make. And then from the discussion I heard um, about the, the lighting, uh, I guess this is a, a question um, for us as to do we need a uh, speech sign special use permit for the for the um, sign? For the signage there that's going to be there on the building so i don't know if that's to lance or well uh well, gary i'll just answer your question with the, the uh, uh landscaping um adam I, I see he's pulled up some of the uh the renderings we did for the the uh roadway project uh that will have i believe it has trees i don't know if it was in the median but playing alongside there's some existing uh, uh, growth trees um, be on the left of his drawings. Um, and certainly, uh, uh, yeah, anything to soften up the parking lot, uh, some low shrub, you know, trees and airports don't necessarily mix, but uh, right. in, the, in this case, uh, yeah, some certainly some shade providing trees or just aesthetics, uh, you know, some fruit trees would be, I think would be fine in there. And uh, yeah, if I gotta go get them myself, I'll, I'll put them in there. <laughs> I think to answer your question, though, I, I would, we're going to avoid doing any kind of taller vegetation, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but in this area, that's right. Uh, but maybe, maybe over in this area, yeah. that's fine. This is projected to be a, a relatively main taxiway in the future. So there is a possibility for some landscaping in, in the parking lot area. Um, Eric, okay. uh, is this the industrial zoning? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, don't we in our parking requirements have a, I know with the uh, car, car dealerships, we uh, require a tree per so many parking places. Uh, if it applied there, I guess should be considered here. Yeah, there's something in, not in the parking requirements. I think it's actually in the landscaping requirements, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
doing? Well, whatever that requires, uh, just duly note that we should make sure it's complied with. <clears throat> yeah, I, I actually don't think we have any, um, no, I think we have two, two smaller berry trees proposed and that's, those are these ones right here, one here and one here, but we, we don't have that very many trees proposed. It says for parking areas designed for more than 10 cars, a minimum of 5% of the interior of the parking area shall be devoted to landscaping. The arrangement and location of the landscaped area shall be dispensed throughout the parking areas so as to prevent unsightliness and monotony of parking cars. Okay, that talks about landscaping. So it, it, I guess it's considered a green area. Uh, and I think there was something about trees. And may, maybe that was in the old off-street parking rigs too. Um, anyway. Uh, actually in the section just above it, but that relates to, uh, actually, no, that's right, but that's weird. Anyway, so yeah, there is shade trees, one shade tree for every 10 parking spaces. There you go. There you go. Will we uh, just make a note of that section and make sure we include it in our resolution? 220.76 D15. Okay. C. Adam, you had said that the uh, stormwater runoff would uh, go to the west to a uh, stormwater uh, facility. Does that eventually drain toward Thomas Road and under Thomas? It does not drain under Thomas. Okay. <clears throat> um, I can pull up a quick. While you're doing that, I, I just recall on your plans, you showed a cross pipe under Thomas that was in poor condition. And it, my thought was if, if there was runoff going in that direction, uh, that pipe may not be able to take it, but if it doesn't go that way, problems mute. The, the other thing I do have that I would have I would have been set up for you guys all to view is the material board. I have a, a virtual material board um, that I can share if you guys are interested. But right now I'm just pulling up the Google Maps to show you what I'm talking about with the oh. Took me home. Hey Chuck, just to answer that question on uh, drainage, um, yep. pretty much everything in any ramp or any in this building would drain to the the, the large ditch, which is between the be between the uh, terminal end and the runway. That all drains and runs around, basically runs around um, the the end of the cul-de-sac and goes into that uh, the neighboring property, um, you know, into a swamp area. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, that cross pipe that drains into that swamp was noted on the plan as being in poor condition. Or, yeah, there is some drainage that actually comes from uh, right before you get to the cul-de-sac there, there's a drain pipe there. And I agree, it's not in good condition. Uh, a lot of the, the drainage that comes from ex existing areas of the airport to the to the right of the screen of that whole big field there mm -hmm. and further. <laughs> um, and further south, all all ends up draining into into that. Um, even even it, it, there's a culvert underneath the the, the taxiway to, to the Mercy flight, um, um, and a lot of the um, a lot of the water groundwater does drain and it goes under and goes through that um, that culvert. Uh, right there, this that. project, however, goes into the the ditch that's kind of runs parallel to the taxiway. Uh, and which goes around that and goes um, basically through the neighboring property. And then the, there's a series of uh, streams or something and it eventually just heads its way next to, uh, heads its way north from there. But, but for this project, I mean, we're right here. Everything sheet flows down to this primary ditch. Right. Which then makes its way up here. Okay. All the way to, to this very large infiltration base. Yep. Okay, gets to the same location, but in a different route. Okay. Yeah, and it takes a lot of water to get this to, to outlet. 
Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, I see Lance brought it up, and I'll just question for in terms of the site plan the uh, a trash enclosure uh, for uh, trash and recycling. Uh, do you have plans to put that on your site I, I plan? I can't remember if I answered it uh, to Adam, but uh, there will there will be no dumpster around this facility. We may have one on the back side of our um, um, equipment building, SRE building. Um, move this thing, uh, which is uh, you know to the northwest of the uh, uh, security building. There, it'd be up here. Any kind yeah. of dumpster would be up in this area. That would, would not have any kind of the, the, all the trash for uh, both the security building and our area building and and uh, anything that comes out of the terminal building. So it'd be carried up to that dumpster or dr yes. driven. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I will now open it up to the public. I have not asked the public if they have any comments. Is there anyone Chuck, out there? Chuck, just, be, just before you, you do yeah. that, I guess I didn't get my answer either from Lance or Eric or something. Do we need a, an additional special use, uh, re, uh, uh, special use permit resolution for the uh, signage, lighted signage that's on the building? No, only special use permits are required for signage within a commercial district within the CC. Okay, good, thank you. That is a good question because I had a similar question because we're so far away from the road or anything. I didn't know if we needed any kind of yep. special. Good catch on the uh, landscaping in the parking lot though, Gary. It was good. All right, uh, anybody else? Oh, well, I'm, I'm, tr uh, I'm gonna go out to the uh, general public. Anyone want to uh, testify, ask questions? Okay, none being heard. Uh, let's move back to the board. I think we're about ready. The uh, the county planning <laughs> county planning board. You uh, you woke them up. They they wrote quite a uh, dissertation on this regarding stormwater and certainly concerns about the Auburn Trail, which is part of the master plan, not specific to this site. Uh, but uh, there was considerable review done by the County Planning Board. Chuck, uh, Chuck on, on that, I was, we were just going to reply to the comments that they had that were specifically for November, 2020. Some of those seemed like they were carryover comments from, mm -hmm. uh, is that an acceptable approach? Uh, that would be fine. I don't, I don't think it affects any decision we're making this evening, but it would be helpful to reply to them. <clears throat> okay. Uh, you folks are cool with uh, Canada Go Farmington water towards the uh, public water supply? Yes. We are, um, we're, we're actually tapping off of uh, the existing service to the, to the security building. Okay. Uh, our ag committee uh, did a detailed review, but said there's no harm, no foul here regarding agriculture. Uh, Chris Jensen had his comments were on the on-site system, which I guess Adam and Chris will get involved with uh, moving forward. Jim Fletcher had no comments. Uh, that's about it. Uh, if I don't hear anything from anyone else, I will close the hearing. So if the hearing is closed, we will now deliberate on two actions. One is a uh, seeker type, oh, this is unlisted, I guess. Yep, it's unlisted. Uh, did, was the part one, I have part one question mark. I don't know if we couldn't find it or. No, there, Bob had brought up that he was looking at another part one. Okay. The part one that was provided, I believe is correct. Mm -hmm. I think Eric's shown it now. Okay, so we have a part one. We know, uh, Lance, you prepared a part two and three on behalf of the board. Uh, Bob, you were okay with part one of the seeker? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a, then a resolution for unlisted action uh, applying to this particular property. Uh, I will make a motion that we uh, consider adoption. Uh, do I have a second? I'll take it, Bob. 
Okay, motion a second for a unlisted consideration of the seeker. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And no. what is unlisted, Chuck? It's unlisted, yes, Karen. Yeah, I was said to, can you tell me why? I can't remember. Oh, uh, I will yield to, uh, that's such a simple question. Yeah. I'll yield it to Lance. Okay. Sure, so uh, it's not it's not type two and it's not a type one because this action is not defined in the seeker parameter. So seeker cook, the seeker regulations have listed listed items. This is not listed as one of the items that would be in there. So therefore, anything that's not listed is automatically deemed unlisted and therefore requires us to follow uh, a short EAF process. Okay. The planning board always has the right to require a more thorough review if it deems appropriate, requiring a full EAF to be provided. But I didn't think that this rendered that this would require that. Thank you. Okay. Um, did we take a vote? I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Yeah, we did. Okay, so moving on to the uh, site plan. I'll make that motion, uh, Chuck, for a single site plan, single stage site plan approval at 2450 Brickyard Road, uh, CPN 20 074 uh, for the Ontario County Industrial Development Agency with the eight conditions. So Mr. Chairman and board, I, I believe number eight would have to be revised as it does not require Candago Lake watershed inspectors approval. I think that we simply change that to restate it requires the town CEO and or New York state approval. Hmm. That's that, that should be reflected in eight. And then I added nine, which is regarding the landscaping requirements of subsection 220 76, Eric, correct me, is it D15? Two twenty seventy six D yep, 15 okay. C. So number nine would be written, the site plans are to be revised to meet the town code requirements regarding landscaping within subsection 220-76 D15 regarding one shade tree for every 10 parking spaces for a total of two shade trees to be provided. And I stand corrected at nine with a rewrite of eight. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Ryan. Can I, can, All right. can I interrupt have... just for a second? Sure, um, I believe um, how it's worked out at the airport, the, the, the county code enforcement officer is the one issuing the permit. I don't know if that makes any difference in this resolution. I believe that is correct as well. Um, Chris generally doesn't inspect these ones, I don't believe. So. Does it, uh, Claire, I'm sorry, looking for clarification. Does it inspect what ones? If uh, I can... One's on county property. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, if I, if I can interject, uh, it was an agreement between the the town and the IDA that the uh, uh, any county or, or public buildings on the airport would be uh, would go through town site plan approval and uh, uh, code enforcement through the county. Any private development on the airport would be through the town wholly through uh, site plan uh, approval and uh, code enforcement. Okay. Does that affect this resolution in any way? Right. I, I don't. I don't believe so. I don't. Okay. I just said prior to an issuance of a COO, an, an approval by the CEO, the town CEO, and or New York State regarding the review of the proposed on-site wastewater treatment design is to be provided. Well, can we, the town, if we're not giving out a certificate of occupancy, that's something that comes from the county apparently. Um, can we condition that even on it? So how can they get a CFO without uh, an approved septic system? That's the question that we're trying to restrict. Well, I guess hopefully the county would re require or see it before they issue the CFO. But I guess what you're saying, Lance, there's no guarantee of that. Yeah. We're protecting yeah, ourselves. I, I, 
yeah, I think it's just, we simply put it in here and we do our due diligence in terms of monitoring as best we can. Obviously the county is going to issue a, a close, you know, CFO when they deem it appropriate. Yeah, and, and Chris Jensen brought that up in his comment letter. His con only concern was the septic system and uh, he didn't mention any, uh, it made it sound like he was involved somehow with it. So, all right, let's leave it in. Let's leave it in. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean, I'm fine with it left in. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't conflicting guidance going forward. Oh, no. you, you gave us a point of information that certainly well. Yeah, and good, thank you. you didn't, didn't realize that. Okay, I uh, got a motion proudly made by Bob and seconded by Ryan uh, to uh, approve a single stage site plan for the, uh, the airport. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, guys, uh, you got through this one. I guess there's another plan further down the runway, to use an expression, coming before us. Mm -hmm. In the new year. Yeah, we'll be here. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in front of you in uh, January. January. For a uh, conventional hangar. Okay. Bob, it would be it's helpful. Fancy, but it's nice. It, it would be helpful if you brought the uh, master plan or somebody had a copy of the master plan for that uh, review. We have a PDF of it. I mean, I, I can pull it up right now if you want to see it, but of course we do have Oh, no, no. Can we no. do that later? Can we please yeah. do that later? Yeah, Ryan's, <laughs> Ryan's got, he wants to go out to the airport with his <laughs> date. <clears throat> what do you go out and park out there uh, by the fence? Back, hey, that, that back in that cul-de-sac, man, if I was uh, 50 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right, the bar is in my desk drawer. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Now I know. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank Have you. a good evening. Good Thank holiday. You. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. On to the more mundane issues, but very important. Uh, the approval of the November 10th minutes, which were very well done by John. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the uh, minutes from November 10th. Okay, thank you. Second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, uh, moving down, uh, nothing from staff. Uh, we got some letters of credit. People want their money back. Uh, looks like we got three of them. I would, in the interest of time, entertain a uh, motion for all three. One has to do with S&J Morrell uh, in section 9D. Uh, the others, Eric and Bree Blazak, they finished their house there on County Road 16. <laughs> and the auto wash is now washing cars, so they're requesting yeah. their money back. Any I make a motion to approve all three CPN 19037, CPN 19005, and CPN 19074 is written. Thank you, Karen. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Bob. Okay, Bob, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now we have some people that got caught on the clock. Yeah. Uh, let's go over them real quick uh, just to see the reasons for their extension request. Uh, Venezia representing Richard Gray, Island Beach. Anything specific, Eric, as to why he wants an extension, or is it the Talk old goes on. the old bugaboo? Well, I don't think it's been delayed. Really. Um, it's... They're under construction still. I mean, I think the big thing is just that they didn't realize they had to get it signed still. <coughs> okay. Okay. There's uh, only well, there's only one change left for the plans it's like adding a detail about a retaining wall it really shouldn't be a big deal but they just got to get to us and sign it oh that's the one uh Burnell was doing right no oh okay uh, much much oh that was school than... yeah okay gotcha wrong retaining wall uh j &T properties so as you guys know, they had to revise the plan for it, change up the design of the building because they didn't want to move that.
private water line that kind of ran behind it. Mm. Uh, essentially, they did that. They're pretty much ready to get the plant signed, but they're right at the end of the expiration date, so they just need a couple more weeks. Yeah, I think we we looked at that and gave them approval to move the building, right? Yep. Okay. And uh, my neighbors behind me here, uh, the Dixon Schwabels. Uh, they are working with their architect to finalize plans. Okay. All right, very good. Okay, I will entertain a motion for all three extensions. They're, in all cases, their first re request. In fact, I'll make that motion. I'll make a motion and we uh, grant the extensions for CPN 19029, CPN 20040, and CPN 20041. I have a second. Second. Thank you, Karen. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, anybody uh, else have anything for the good of the board? I, I do, do see we're all catching up on our training. Uh, Amanda proudly announced that she finished her 12 hours. Jeez. I think for the most of us, uh, we're pretty good shape. You guys, you're not, you guys aren't doing 12 hours. Hmm. Uh, if, we're, if you're not there, you got another month. There's plenty of opportunities online. And uh, please make sure you get it done. Uh, next meeting, our last meeting of the year is December 8th. And uh, I won't read through the applications, but uh, we got a couple. Any, uh, sh any we should be aware of, Eric? Uh, pay special attention. I don't think so. I mean, they're mostly sketch plans. Okay. Let's see, so they're not real high stakes. Some more large solar facilities planning. Okay. Nothing else. Uh, Karen, you're a short timer. This will be your next meeting coming up. We'll be. We hate to see you go, but we we know you've got you got things to take care of, and uh, certainly we. We'll talk about it then, but we do certainly appreciate the time and effort and you've put into the planning board. It's It's been uh, very rewarding for me to work with you and hopefully you've enjoyed working with us. Absolutely. Okay. Otherwise, five years went awfully quickly. Five years? Oh. Uh -huh. get, your, get your gold watch. <laughs> All righty, I'm going to uh, cue Mr. Stachok for a dismissal. Hey, well, all right, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to y'all. Uh, I'll make a recommenda uh, recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move to um, uh, adjourn this meeting at 8.01 p.m. Second. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, everybody have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks. See you. you too. Take care.